is Gary Shotton, and in this lesson I'm going to talk about spinning plates. What do I mean by that? Well, it's really a topic on time management and how uh, we all have the same amount of time, but it's the difference of how we use that time. And uh, I'm not going to claim any kind of perfection in this. Uh, if you had a thousand people talk on this subject, you'll probably have a thousand different ideas. Uh, probably some of them will line up very similar that are very logical, but I'm just going to talk about what I do. I was asked uh, to do that, and uh, I have quite a few different responsibilities. First of all, I'm in a grandpa stage, so I don't have any small children. That changes a lot. I'm married, though, and I have responsibilities at the home and with my wife, and I have uh, uh, this company. I'm sitting in this company right now. We have 60-plus employees. I'm the CEO the only outside salesperson, and the CFO, where I handle all the finances. And uh, yet at the same time, I'm involved with this nonprofit uh, called Inspiring Better Business. And then I have my own things of church, and uh, I uh, help and usher at church and help out. So I have a few things spinning, if you want to think of that term. And the idea of a spinning plates is that if you've ever seen that analogy, somebody is spinning maybe 10, 15, 20 plates, Maybe that's a little bit too many, maybe 12 plates. And they get the first one spinning, they get the second one spinning, and they get the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and on up. And pretty soon they got to run back and make sure that that plate that they got first spinning, they got to push it again. They got to make it work. Well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be running around with my head cut off. By the way, when somebody tries to approach me and they're like all freaking out because they're in a, an emergency, uh, that is no reason for me to jump in. To their situation and be totally disorganized and jump into their emergency, I'm going to stay stable and try to maintain my consistency no matter what uh, their situation is, if it's not life-threatening, of course. So basically, uh, we're here to, to talk about uh, how we manage our time. Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to mention my phone. Uh, almost all of us have phones, and from a technical standpoint, I use a calendar on there, and without it, I personally would be uh, totally lost. Uh, I don't have a secretary that lines up my appointments. I know some people do that. That wouldn't work for me. Uh, I have my own, I set my own schedule and my own plans. But the good thing is, I can in just 30 seconds or two seconds, I can change an appointment around because I'm very good with my calendar on my phone. I have to use the uh, software called Outlook. I've used it for years. And I can put uh, an appointment that I believe is going to be every week, like uh, uh, a meeting that's every week, and I can put it on repeat, and every week it's on the 2 o'clock or noon on Monday or whatever it is, and then I can delete that, move it around. If I set an appointment, I have a way of just putting question marks up in the subject line, like I'm going to uh, meet somebody for lunch, and if I put a little question mark on it, that means it's not confirmed yet. I'm just kind of tentatively thinking about that. We need to confirm that. And so I very seldom miss an appointment. It's happened, but very seldom because I use my phone very, very effectively. Not perfect, but very effectively. Now let's talk about the philosophies. Well, first of all, uh, I'm a systems thinking guy. I've been dubbed that by some of my business friends, Mr. Systems. And I think I think in systems on a day-to-day -day basis. What do I mean by that? Well, when I have a task in front of me, I start immediately thinking almost subconsciously, is this what I call a one and done? Do I need to learn to do this? Is it something that's going to come up once a year? Is it going to come up very seldom? Well, I don't want to put time and effort into a one and done kind of uh, event. You know, uh, 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 my taxes, okay? That's somebody else I hire and help do my taxes because I don't think I have time to keep up with the tax laws and fill out all the forms. Other people disagree with it. They want to do their own taxes. That's fine. But for me, that's a category of one and done. Uh, something that comes up just on an annual basis or every six months, not the same thing over. I try to delegate that. I try to hire that down. I try to do something that I don't try to get into that and learn how to do that. Now, then it goes to uh, what am I good at? <laughs> There's some things I'm just not good at. I'm not good and English and spelling and word structure. That's why I'm kind of being lazy here in a way that I talk these things and let somebody else then clean them up, make them sound good, make the text look good, because 
it takes me a long time for me to get the English right and uh, and punctuate it right. And at the end of trying for maybe an hour on an eight minute teaching, it's still not right. Somebody else looks at it, I look over it. So if I'm not good at some things, you will not be good at some things. Try to get rid of those. Don't put those on your plate. Don't try to make yourself good at everything. Then on the systems, there's sometimes that I see that there's just no way I need to learn how that works so that I can maybe not do everything that's involved with it, but I'm going to be in there enough that I just got to put the effort to it. Well, when I bought this company, I had no choice. I didn't know much about a machine shop, so I'm in learning because I'm going to be in this with my life, with my finances, my future. Now, I can never run a machine like these men behind me, uh, but I, I stopped short of that, of course, because I'm not going to run a machine, but I know how the machines work. I dug in and continue to dig in and stay on top of that. Let's talk about the nonprofit that I have, Inspiring Better Business. I hired someone to create the website, our current website. And by the way, when we get a thousand teachings, I'm going to hire somebody else to create a new and better website. But until then, I do a lot of the editing. I do a lot of the work on these these uh, uh, videos and these teachings. First of all, uh, I'm kind of uh, 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 still structuring that in a way that, that I can uh, do that uh, efficiently and doesn't take a lot of time. At the same time, if you go to our website right now, you'll go under participate and you'll see that I sat down and did a video teaching so that I'm teaching other people how to translate and transcribe because I'm not going to transcribe and translate. I'm creating a system. We have a system for others to get involved. So that's probably the biggest key for what we're doing is creating systems for others and that creates the scenario where you're actually working on your company or on your project or on your nonprofit, not in it. Once you find yourself bogged down kind of in the weeds, uh, doing some routine things all the time, and it takes a lot of time, you probably need to find somebody else to do that. Create a system. Well, this is not going to answer everybody on everything, but uh, I do uh, do these that way, and, and again, you have total latitude and expect you to do a number of things differently than what I do. Maybe something to help you from what I said, though. We're here to inspire better business. Thank you.